fans and welcome to another episode of the Hambini Engineering Show. If you like five-year-olds, then watch this. That might sound a bit wrong, but it's not meant to. Bye! Me. Right, so let's start with the PowerPoint. Ah, uh, start recording. ka -ching! Did my voice go high? Right. Absolute crap reaches new heights on the bullshit meter. Now, if you're not familiar with what happened, please keep watching. Bye, Hambini. That's me, aged five. The merch will be coming back soon. I am also... Where's the fucking pen? Ah, oh, fuck. Right, pen, yes. The pen... is... working. Could be WKG. Anyway, right. I am on Shitstagram and on Facebook too. Right, give you a bit of background. What is all this about? Well, this is about these things, which are, well, rare derailleurs. If I show you a... Um, well, a picture. This is a guy's bike off Cycling Tips where he reviewed a type from uh, Ceramic Speed. And this is just basically a drivetrain. So if you're not familiar with this, this is the back of a bike, the cassette on the back, and you've got all these gears. Now, the bit in question that's a replacement is this bit, which is called an OSPW. So here is a rare mech, which I destroyed earlier. And here is the bit that gets replaced. Now the whole cost of this, which is a bit old, is probably like $250, and it's an electronic one. Someone is selling one of these for 700, and that someone is a company called Absolute Crap, or Absolute Black. So let's go back to this. Right, they claim to be engineered in England and made somewhere in one of 27 EU countries. So that is a screenshot from their like tripe. And they have allegedly 50, 50 employees with orifices in several countries, all of which are unlisted. And as I said earlier, it's $700. Now let me show you the product page for this product. This is their website. Um, there's some pictures, go down, and then if you hit size and size guide, it comes up with this completely irrelevant box to pick from, and then you can choose whatever the fuck you like. They keep going down, more pictures, more of this crap, all the stuff we're going to come to, a nice little video, a graph, um, some other bits and pieces, some chap who's called Borat. Um, I kid you not, that is his name, Borat Fonda. Um, and some videos about how you make it and stuff like that. But we are going to move on to a bit more about what this is about. So let's press this. Yes, I love getting trolled. Now, a couple of weeks ago, absolute crap said the following. Me, that's me, and another YouTuber who you may or may not be familiar with called Peak Talk, we were armchair engineers. And one hell of an armchair that I have. I don't know anything. And they dissed my hair. Did you see the chat beforehand? And look at my hair. Oh, they dissed it. I think you should certainly use a service of one to get your hairstyle sorted. <sighs> Fighting talk indeed. Right. I've just shown you the product page, but this is the graph from the product page. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. What they've done for their error analysis is taken the rear mech, driven some air at it, turned it through 30 degrees, driven some more air at it, and then come up with a completely perfectly linear graph. I can't believe it. I'm not sure what planet they're on, but apparently that is their analysis. Then we come on to a bit more of this, which is the angle of the dangle. Now this is, uh, this is from their video, this is a snapshot of the rare mech. Now, the rare mech should never be at this angle because there's no tension on it. So where these yellow lines are, it should be more like that. 
to indicate there's tension on it. Now, if you have a um, oversized pulley, that is going to be worse than if you have a standard pulley. So here's my standard pulleys. I can't remember if they're 12 tooth, something like that. Um, if you change the angle, then you expose more air to it and it gets worse. So basically, it's going to get worse. But their results conveniently don't show that. The other thing to note is the perfectly streamlined airflow. There is no way on this fucking planet the airflow coming into there looks like that when you are on a bike. Additionally, where's the chain? And we have no rotation of the pulley wheels. Now to justify this, they said this. And I've annotated it for you and they made a spelling mistake right here, which I've corrected. It did say black, but it now says crap. But I'm dyslexic, so what do I know? I mean, I'm, a, I'm not an, even a native English speaker, believe it or not. A lot of people don't believe that, but that's true. Right. I've annotated it, right, the, the bit that, the, that they complained about, or not complained about, but try to justify it is, we only need to compare relative differences to know which cage is more aero. What does that mean? There are sensor limitations, there's sensitivity, and and other factors, and and other factors. Does that mean and another factors, which make full drive train setup in motion impossible to measure and repeat? If it's impossible to measure and repeat, why have you put it on your marketing page? Is it just so that some idiotic five-year-old armchair engineer can ream the fuck out of you? I don't know. Then we come on to the bearings. Now, I am no bearing expert. I mean, I don't know anything about bearings. Absolute Black said that I don't know anything. Uh, and they said, we produce our own full ceramic bespoke bearings. Now, I did go to the World Bearing Association to ask about these. And one of my mates in there said that he thought these were um, from China. And we're going to come on to a bit of the uh, provenance of these things. Definitely not made in Poland, which is where they intimated, um, because it's fairly specialised gear. And now if you look a bit carefully, and I've zoomed in for you, you can see this is actually a stuck on decal. Right, so where do these bearings come from? Well, if you look a bit more digging, um, you will find various people, mainly on AliExpress, who sell this type of bearing. Now this bearing is quite specific because it uses um, a ceramic inner race, a ceramic outer race, and allegedly ceramic balls. Now they are quite cheap. Now you're probably wondering why SKF, NTN, FAG, and um, NSK don't make this type of bearing and the answer is because it is extremely brittle. So you think about the plates that you eat your dinner off um, as you're eating if you go and hit it really hard it will just crack. So there's something not going on quite right there um, but here you go here is the JZN bearing. See it's of a similar construction to the one that's just been shown. Um, so do I think they were uh, bought, bought bespokely made in Poland or in other 27 EU countries? Doubt it, I think they've come from China, but there you go. I'm just a cynic. Right, the bearing itself. Now, in another post, Absolute Black said it was 51 by 58 by four. Now, I don't think they are engineers because they wrote it as 51 slash 58 slash 4. No engineer worth their salt would write using that format because it means something else. So I've written it correctly here, 51 by 58 by 4, so ID, OD, and then thickness, uh, but they wrote that. Now, I don't believe it's bespoke sizing because, I mean, I've only been an engineer for, ooh, a few months because I'm only five, it's the same size as a rotary shaft seal. So um, a few things might have happened here. I wonder if they've used the casing from a rotary shaft seal and then changed some of the innards of it. Again, call me a cynic. And they also claimed it was full ceramic. Now, I don't believe it's fully ceramic because the cage that holds the bearing balls apart uh, is unlikely to be made from ceramic materials because you just can't mold it. So again, I'm not suggesting that they're lying. 
Right, then they have a four year warranty on their bearings. Now, what doesn't it cover? It doesn't cover wear and tear. And then it doesn't cover damage caused by contamination. Now, this is the little crux of it, you see, that read the small print. If you read on their frequently asked questions, it says, you, I mean, the English on here is not perfect, but you get the gist of it. You will not refit the bearing shield as the bearing does not require it. It has been factory fitted only to extend the initial service interval. So if we go to their website, which is, yeah, so there you go. So it doesn't cover wear and tear, doesn't cover contamination, but as soon as you have your first service interval, you are now running a completely open bearing, okay, that has no seal, okay? So just bear that in mind. Then, right, let's go back. This is just getting more and more ridiculous, right? This is another load of stuff. In fact, they've copied and pasted this on a load of responses they put in their social media. And I just, you know, Going to highlight a few little bits and pieces. So they've put you have to visit a good university who specializes in bearing friction to know anything about friction. They don't specify which one, they just say it's one in Portugal. And you need a special testing machine, and they've published stuff on their website, which I've shown you earlier, um, which shows the um, the friction from their fan dabby dozy bearing. Well, the only graph I could find that was remotely relevant was this. <laughs> and it, it says in their literature that they used grease, okay? And you can see the bar for grease is like that big. The bar for oil is that big. So, so here it says full ceramic bearing under the real oil country. It is clear that greased bearing is the best option for this particular application. And what fucking planet are you on? The bar for, for oil is way smaller than the bar for grease. <laughs> Seriously, right? Then we come on to, <laughs> oh God, low friction despite the size of the bearing using special geometry, small size of the balls and special grease. Now, what they said was, they said that in the previous, um, uh, pop, not podcast, but kind of like YouTube podcast that myself and Pete Talk did, that I got it wrong. That, that big bearings don't give you more friction. So, let's have the best form of reaming when you pin someone with their own data. So, it will sh shortly show you a few things. Right. This is their video where they show you the airflow coming over and the hollow cage doesn't spin at all. Now we come on to the ceramic speed and you can see that spinning away nicely, indicating a lot less friction. Now we've got Durian Rider who is spinning around an absolute black pulley. Look at the spin test on that. Absolutely appalling. What a fucking disgrace. $700 and you get that and you're going to end up going slower. Now, now, <laughs> cheapskate manufacturing hidden by marketing. If you look here, you can see what are the, it's like the leftover bits from injection molding. So this is, um, it's basically plastic. It's just injection molded plastic. It's like what toys are made out of. Um, plastic is inherently flexible and they've apparently reinforced it with carbon but the geometry of this is flexible and the, the, the problem I mean they kind of shot themselves in the foot because it's missing um, the link here between the lower pulley and the upper pulley so it's, it can bend like that and you've got a cantilevered load on the bearing it's gonna flex like foot man right and they've said this contrary to common knowledge so that's all of Shimano's history and campags and SRAM's history, and even sensors history, flexibility is good. This means less friction and less watts, as the pulley doesn't have to fight against it. <laughs> so you've, you've made your pulley, I mean, there's, there's a design flaw in this because 
it's like a cantilevered load on the bearing and they've taken one of the bearing supports out. I mean, it's like a big, big no-no, especially if you've got an offset load. So if the um, cassette or the gear you're in is either at one extremity or the other, um, it's going to put put carbon into tension or compression. It'll just wa waft around. Carbon's crap in compression. It's rubbish. You want, carbon's only really strong in tension. And in this case, the carbon isn't wound. It's not even you know, and it's not lined up in one direction. It's all over the shop because it's molded. It's plastic. Right, and then we have this, which is the Silent X-Ring Pulley, and they make a big song and dance about this. Um, this is just basically an O-ring that they've attached to um, the pulley, and you can see that there, and you can see these things here, which hold the O-ring in. Unbelievable, yeah? Right, the absolutely crap scale of animal excrement. On the right, which is good, we have leprechaun shite. Maybe so good because no one's ever experienced it. It's unobtainable. Unicorn shite, not far behind leprechaun shite. Then a colostomy bag. Crap. Crap in capital letters. Crap spelt wrong and absolutely crap. Now the first entry onto this is the loser in charge of absolute crap social media. I mean, they aren't an engineer at all. And then we have, on the right, the Silent X Pulley, also known as an O-ring of proven design. It's been around for ages, quite cheap, well done. In sort of crap to capital crap, we have anyone stupid enough to buy this. And finally, the product as a whole, it's called a hollow cage. I didn't mention it, but it's there in the left of the scale. Right, questions, comments, any of that lot, down below. As always, thank you very much for your time and keep banging your hairdressers.